You know, I have been thinking that uh, ARM laptops and electric vehicles are similar in a lot of ways. You see, both of them are technologically better, but they both have some limitations. EVs don't have a lot of range and they are dependent on public charging infrastructure. And ARM chips, although really fast, they need developer support so that apps can be optimized for their platforms. So in an era of the great transition, maybe it's better to choose something that offers best of the both worlds. For cars, it can be hybrids, like the Suzuki Grand Vitara, which offers great range and needs no charging. And for laptops, it can be this thing. This is flame right Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Itnesh Dubey and today we are taking a look at the brand new Asus ZenBook S16 and also a brand new chip, the AMD Ryzen AI 9 HX370 CPU. But before we begin, I have a humble request to AMD. Please fix your naming scheme. It is as bad as the one Qualcomm uses for the X Elite chip. I mean X1e, I get it. 78 forgivable. But what is 100 for? Care, rent aside, this laptop is really special. Firstly, the design is absolutely magnificent. This top panel has a finish which I can only describe similar to a silky stone. Asus is calling this thing the Seraluminium, which is the result of taking an aluminium chassis and transforming it into a really strong ceramic. The result? a really tough material with almost no flex at all. It is also pretty light with no screen wobble as well. All in all, I absolutely love this top finish, especially in this amazing Scandinavian white color. On the inside too, the laptop looks very different from what you usually see. The keyboard does not have a numpad and frankly, I prefer it that way. And it is an absolute joy to use as well. Like the keys are very mellow and silent and yet they have a decent enough spring action and key travel. The touchpad is huge and works very well. Like Asus is becoming one of those brands that always nails its touchpad. I know this because I'm personally using an ROG Strix G16 and in that one too, the touchpad is very good. Mind you that this is not a haptic touchpad but a normal mechanical one. And yet, it works really magnificently. The I.O. is also very sorted. Because along with the USB Type-A, Type-C Thunderbolt port, HDMI and a 3.5mm port, this thing also has a full-size card data slot as well. And the ear vents above the keyboard also give this laptop a very unique and minimalist look. Also, I really think that Asus missed the opportunity to put the speaker grills on both these sides because I would take upward firing speakers over downward firing ones any day. And speaking of speakers, here's how they sound. Now, the display over here is a little bit dim compared to the Vivo Book and the Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Pro, but it still has 100% sRGB and 100% DCI-P3 color space coverage. And since it is an OLED display, so the colors are very vivid and punchy, and you will have a great time watching content or even playing games. Also note that this display is touch enabled, but the hinge does not support 180 or 360 degree rotation. Chalo, let's finally talk about the new AMD chip inside here and see what new it brings to the table. So the Ryzen 9 HX370 is a 12-core 24-thread CPU and it is based on TSMC's new 4 nanometer FinFET process node. So then the question arises, how efficient is this new processor? Well, considering that it is powering a 16-inch display and only consuming 33 watts, it gave us a battery life of around 11 and a half hours. Now I know it is not as efficient as the ARM chip we recently tested, but that chip has app compatibility issues and downright cannot play many video games. Whereas with this AMD Ryzen, you are getting a good balance of everything, including battery life, 100% app compatibility and good gaming performance. 
Speaking of which, here's how the Asus ZenBook S16 performs in 720p low graphics settings. First up, in shadow of the Tomb Raider, the S16 excels with 90fps, significantly outpacing the VivoBook S15's 42fps and the Galaxy Book 4 Pro's 45fps. Next up in Borderlands 3, the ZenBook S16 hits 106fps, far ahead of the VivoBook S15's 42fps and the Galaxy Book 4 Pro's 62fps. In GTA 5, the ZenBook S16 scores 95fps, outperforming the VivoBook S15's 60fps and the Galaxy Book 4 Pro's 71fps. And with 132fps in Civilization 6, the ZenBook X16 far surpasses the VivoBook S15's 27fps and the Galaxy Book 4 Pro's 88.6fps. And here's how the ZenBook S16 performs at 1080p medium graphics settings. And as you can see, the AMD chip performs really well over here as well. Now, even in CPU benchmarks like Cinebench R23, the Ryzen AI 9 scores better than its competitors. But in the Cinebench 2024 is where we see the Snapdragon X Elite clearly leading the race. In terms of SSD speed, the ZenBook S16 has pretty standard PCIe Gen 4 SSD speeds. It is definitely faster than the Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Pro Day. Now, in terms of memory speed, the 32GB RAM is pretty fast when compared to the 32GB unit in the Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Pro, but it is not as fast as the x Elite powered Asus VivoBook S16. Also, in terms of memory latency, the Snapdragon again comes out on top. So, the conclusion is that these chips do represent a significant improvement over the previous generation. And if you are looking for a laptop which will give you competitive battery life to an ARM laptop and you also want no compatibility issues that come with the ARM laptop, then the Asus ZenBook S16 is the perfect device for you. In short, it indeed offers the best of both worlds. And until then, this is me Yatnesh Dubey and I will see you guys next time.